<laughs> All right, rewind. That was a jazzy start, wasn't it? That was great. Thank you, Ivan. We appreciate it. Welcome to Lakeside. It is good to see you all here this morning, and happy Mother's Day. You'll see that Ivan is doing the music. If you'll put the picture up there, we'll show you why I is not here. That was taken just a little bit ago. Carolina is graduating OCU Law School this morning. Now, I'm not sure why, who plans that on Sunday morning, Mother's Day, but they didn't ask me, so there it is. So we want to congratulate Carolina. We'll let her know that, that you all gave her a round of applause for, for her hard work in getting to that point. It is Mother's Day. We are so glad you're all here and pray God's blessings on you. And uh, happy Mother's Day to each and every one of you. And we have a video for Mother's Day. And some gifts for Mother's Day. It's Mother's Day. So here's a step-by-step -step guide on how to make all those Proverbs 31 ladies feel great on their special day. Step one, locate some beautiful flowers. Moms love saving money. So try to find some free ones. Step two, get the flowers and the water as quick as you can. Can't have them die on ya. Step three, find some more beautiful flowers, but this time let the scissors do all the work. Perfection. Step four, find a bow or something to jazz things up a bit. Remember people, it's all about the details. Step five, enlist your baby sister to help you make a thoughtful Mother's Day card. I knew you couldn't be trusted. Step six, if you have another sister waiting in the bullpen, grab her instead. Preferably one that appreciates the delicate art of watercoloring. You have a gift. Thank you. Hey, honey, I'm home. Hey, sweetie. It's a thought that counts, I guess. Happy Mother's Day to everyone. We're so glad you're here. Today we will continue the series that I'm doing uh, on Open the Door. And today we will be opening the door to prayer. If you may remember that these are things that I wanted to share with you before I leave. So we're going to talk about prayer today, and in that vein, let's begin with prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for your presence with us each and every day, but Lord, we thank you that you are here as we worship you. We ask your presence, we ask for your guidance, and we ask that you open our hearts and minds to your word today. Bless our service together, bless all of our mothers May this be their special day. This we pray in your almighty name. Amen. Good morning, Lakeside. Good morning. That video is a perfect example of why we are celebrating mothers today. <laughs> Please stand and join us to our uh, opening hymn. Come thou fount of every 
Please join me today in the call to worship. Sing a new song. song Sing about the spirit of love. love Sing of God's abiding love. love Our Our hymn of praise today is uh, they will know we are Christians by our love. And we're going to sing all four verses. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, we are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, and we pray that all unity may one day be restored, and they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love, yes they'll know. And we'll guard human dignity and save human pride. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. All praise to the Father from whom all things come. And all praise to Christ Jesus, God's only Son. And all praise to the Spirit who makes us one. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Join me in our disciples' prayer. Spirit of love, abide in us during worship. Whisper your song of love in our hearts, so love may flow in every word we hear. 
every thought we think, every move we make, and every song we sing. Spirit of power and grace, abide in us so we may abide in your love. Experience the love of our mothers and proclaim your song of love for all. Amen. Now we're excited for our children's moment or church. Are the kids coming up? Okay. Actually, the children could come and sit on the very front pew. That would be great. Good morning. So on May 30th, the children are going to be performing a small play in church. And last week, we began practicing for it. And they did a really good job practicing. So I brought them a treat. I brought them a bag of dum-dums. And they're going to get one when they go home today. Not now. Sorry, guys. But um, I'll let them choose one when they go home. And there's all kinds of flavors in this bag. There's sour apple. There's pineapple. There's watermelon. And sometimes it takes kids, in my experience, a long time to figure out which one they want. They have to look at them all. They have to think about it. It's a really big, important decision. But one thing I've noticed is sometimes at the end, I'm left with butterscotch. No one ever picks that. I don't know why. Sometimes we treat people like those last to be chosen butterscotch suckers. In outdoor games, certain kids are always the last to be chosen. Other times, kids leave others out from gatherings, parties, or other activities. Sometimes there are reasons, like the child left out isn't a great athlete, or maybe he or she isn't inter is interested in different things than your friends. Whatever the reason, it doesn't feel good to be left out. So I'd like everybody here to stop for a minute and try and remember a time when you felt left out or were chosen last. Think about how that made you feel. Did you know that you weren't alone in that sad time? Jesus was with you. He doesn't want anyone to be left out. In the Bible, he reminded his friends that he loves all children, no matter what they look like, or what their interests and talents are. And he wants us to love others like that too. He said, love each other as I have loved you. So today we're going to think about more about how to love everyone and not leave anyone out, butterscotch or not. So this week we need to kind of look around and see if maybe there's somebody that's left out or picked last and try and be their friend. So please pray, pray with me. Dear God, Please help us to remember that Jesus taught us to love one another just as you loved him and as he loved us. And please help us this week to find people that may not be feeling very loved and to show love to them. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we are going to have children's church today, but we're having noisy offering first. So we're going to stay here a little bit longer, and then after noisy offering, we will go back to children's church. All right. Deanna. You want to come up here? <laughs> All right. If you have had a child that has been cared for by Deanna Bond, stand now. <laughs> All right. This is Deanna's last Sunday working in the nursery for the church. And we are going to miss her greatly. Uh, we're going to miss her. I know Patsy's going to miss her. <laughs> but she has some big plans. She's not just retiring from us. She's retiring from all the jobs that she has. 
and uh, is going to retire and do some traveling and some other things. So, uh, is anything else? Nope. <laughs> well, we have, she has been such a big part of Lakeside for a long time. And uh, we just want to say thank you to Deanna. We want to wish her well. We want the, the rest of her life to be wonderful. And we want her to know that she always has a home here at Lakeside. You come right back here every Sunday that you can, okay? When you're not out there traveling around, you need to be here on Sunday. And we look forward to seeing you. We want to say thank you. All right, everybody. Thank you, Deanna. We have flowers for you. Oh my goodness. And we have a gift card for you. Oh, thank you there. so much. Uh, well, I would like to say just thank you so much. It's been my joy to take care of your children for a few hours each Sunday. Uh, it's just been so wonderful to see them grow and change and um, receive their Christian training here. Uh, that's just so important. So I just thank you for the privilege of being part of their lives. We thank you for being a part of their lives. You have meant so much to us. Let's stand and let's pray with Deanna. Almighty God, your presence has been with Deanna as she has cared for our children, taught our children, helped our children to grow into the young men and women we see all around this world. So thank you for Deanna. We ask that you bless her in her retirement. We ask that you bless her as she travels, keep her safe, bring her back so we can enjoy her presence in our worship. Touch Deanna and continue to touch Patsy and all of our children as we all grow together. This we pray in your name. Amen. Thank you, Deanna. God bless you. We are doing noisy offering the way we used to do it. The children are going to be bringing the buckets to you. So I am expecting to hear a lot of noise. And today the money goes to Positive Tomorrows, which is a group that uh, helps children and young people, students who are homeless. And that's very important cause because we have way too many children who are homeless. So reach in, make a lot of noise, and we're going to at least double it uh, because we've been collecting for a long time with the uh, noisy offering and we've been doing different things with that money. Well, we're going to add some money to whatever we collect today, at least double. So children... Let's... Logan. Georgia. Wait a minute.
thank you all. We have a special reading by Mary Ellen. Uh, when Aya called me about saying something about Mother's Day today, uh, Vicki and Williams and I always kind of think along the same lines. Uh, this was the Bible verse that was on what they handed out that they said at my mom's funeral, which is, she is clothed in strength and dignity, and she laughs without fear of the future. And I thought this was very appropriate to receive this today. Thank you, Vicki. Um, my mother was a very special woman that filled our home with love, respect for others, hard work, good food, a swift hand every now and then, and a heart that always gave first to God and family. She gave all she had to four children unconditionally and taught us to always remember the most important part of life was to make God the center of all we ever did. This poem is dedicated to her and all the mothers. My mother kept a garden, a garden of the heart. She planted all the good things that gave my life its start. She turned me to the sunshine and encouraged me to dream, fostering and nurturing the seeds of self-esteem. And when the rains and storms came, she protected me enough but not too much because she knew I need to stand strong and tough. Her constant good example always taught me right from wrong, markers for my pathway that will last a lifetime long. I am my mother's garden. I am her legacy. And I know from up above she sees the love reflected back from me. Let us pray. All loving God, we give you thanks and praise for mothers young and old. We pray for young mothers who give life and tend to every need. May they be blessed with patience and tenderness to care for their families with great joy. We pray for our own mothers who have nourished and cared for us. May they continue to guide in strong and gentle ways. We pray for women who are not mothers, but still love and shape us with motherly care and compassion. We remember mothers, grandmothers, and great-grandmothers who are no longer with us, but who live forever in our memories to nourish and guide us with their love. For every single seed she has sown, for every prayer she sent above, will come back to her multiplied within her children's love. In thankfulness and gratitude, amen. Amen. Thank you, Mary Ellen. Please uh, join in response uh, our prayer for illumination. We hear your call, O God. And we will follow. We see your presence in all creations. We come now to hear good news. Our New Testament reading today comes from 1 Timothy, uh, verse 2, 1 through 8. <clears throat> First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for everyone. For kings and all who are in high position, so that they may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all goodness and dignity. This is right and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, there is also one mediator between God and humankind, Christ Jesus himself human who gave himself a ransom for all. This was for attested at the right time. For this I was appointed a herald and a, a herald and apostle. I am telling the truth, I am not lying, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. I desire then that in every place the men should pray, lifting up holy hands without anger or argument. Christ is still calling.
<clears throat> open the door to prayer today. In the churches I have served, including Lakeside, we have had Sundays with hymn sings. You may remember us doing that. Of course, that was pre-COVID when we actually had hymnals. In my first church in Warden, Illinois, there was a lady who would call out 177 as soon as I said the hymn sing. We were having a hymn sing. Hymn 177 in the old Cokesbury hymnal is titled Others. Its first stanza, stanza word or something like this. Lord, help me live from day to day in such a self-forgetful way that even when I kneel to pray, my prayer shall be for others. Praying for others. That is what I want to talk about today. Paul says to his young friend Timothy, the first thing I want you to do is to pray. The first thing I want you to do, your responsibility for Lakeside and to Jack, your new pastor, is to pray. Let me share with you why I believe prayer is so important. First, to pray is to care for others. Do you grow weary of the evening news with murders, rapes, and civil disobedience, breaking into the nation's capital and wonder what you can do? Do you ever watch friends or family stressed out over a life situation or suffering from a disease and feel inadequate to help? Those moments are a call to prayer. Richard Foster says, if we truly love people, we will desire for them far more than it is with power to give them. And this will lead us to prayer. In the Gospels, there is a tender story of a father who brings his epileptic son to Jesus for healing. The child has suffered with the disease his entire life. The disciples have tried to heal the boy to no avail. The father is not very optimistic that Jesus can help. Nevertheless, he says, if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. The prayer is more meek than mighty, more timid than towering. It contains no pretense, no boasting, not even much belief. But Jesus responds and heals the boy. You see, and this is an important point, the power of prayer is in the one who hears it, not the one who says it. Okay, hear that one more time. The power of prayer is in the one who hears it, not the one who says it. We pray not because we have the right formulas or a faith strong enough to move mountains, though we may try. We pray because we are needy and helpless and lonely and have nowhere to go but to the Lord. A survey many years back in Newsweek tells us that 75% of Americans pray at least once a week. 70% pray often for the health of a family member. 52% pray regularly for world peace. 84% of Americans think praying for the sick improves their chances of recovery, and more patients are asking their doctors to pray for them. We pray for others because it's often hard to pray for ourselves, isn't it? Grief and disease attack both body and soul. 
When you are down in the valley, prayer becomes difficult and the soul becomes numb. When I had some procedures in the past seven years, I was comforted by the thought of Lakeside holding me up in prayer. When I was in the hospital as a child for, to remove my tonsils, my mom told me to ask God to remind me I was not alone. Later in the day, a tiny sparrow appeared at my window and came back the next morning. Today, that reminds me of Luke 12, 6. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten by God. Do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. God sent a tiny bird to answer my prayers. Paul said to pray every way you know how. For everyone you know. To pray, my friends, is to care. Second, to pray is to cooperate with Christ. Praying for others is called intercession. To intercede is to mediate on behalf of another. It is to present another in their hour of need or stand in the gap between a time of need and a time of change. Christ is our ultimate intercessor. Christ is the priest acting on our behalf, the living bridge between humanity and God. Because Jesus is both fully human and fully divine. He is our true mediator. This is why we pray in Jesus' name. We cannot cross the breach between God and us, but Jesus is God come to our side and united forever to our humanity so we can speak to him and be heard. And then we are united with the divinity, with God. Because of Jesus, we know God is present in our times of struggle. In the 1992 Barcelona Olympics, a 26-year-old British sprinter by the name of Derek Redmond was favored to win the race. Halfway into his semifinal heat, a torn hamstring sent fiery pain throughout his right leg, causing him to crumple on the track. As the medics came rushing in to help, Derek scrambled to his feet, hopping in a crazed attempt to finish the race. Now, that moment is when a big man pushed through the crowd toward the track. He wore a t-shirt with the question, have you hugged your kid today? He wore a cap that said, just do it. The man was named Jim Redman, Derek's dad. When he got to his son, he said, Derek, you don't have to do this. Derek replied, Yes, I do. That was when Big Jim put his arm around Derek and said, then we'll do it together. And that's exactly what they did. To pray is to bring our God out of the stands and into the midst of our human need. It is leaning on God when we are not strong. Let God be your friend, and God will help you carry on. 
It is God's desire to bring individuals and families into saving faith. It is God's desire to bring people off addiction to drugs, alcohol, money, and status. It is God's desire to deliver people from racism, from sexism, nationalism, and consumerism. It is God's desire to bring whole communities into spiritual truth. It is God's desire that we keep the faith and that we finish the race. You see, to pray is not to convince God of our will, but to find the strength to do God's will. To pray is not to have God do our will, but to have the strength to do God's will. It is not overcoming God's reluctance, but laying hold of God's highest willingness. Again, to pray is to cooperate with Christ. Third, to pray is to completely surrender. Verse 8, I desire then that in every place God should pray, lifting up holy hands without anger or argument. Henry Nouwen says, we come to God with tightly clenched fists. So prayer at first is painful because we discover we do not want to let go of the things that hold us and bind us. We want to argue with God over what we see in our world. If you are almighty, why do you seem so feeble? If you want good for us, why is there so much bad? If you came to save the world, how come it is not saved yet? You might remember we dealt with some of those questions a few years back in a different series. Like Job, we reduce God to our perceptions, then curse God for being weak. It is not always easy, my friends, to believe, is it? It's not always easy. Often we pray, God, help our unbelief. Pain and suffering continue to be problems near and far. Questions leave us with clenched fists. We cling to our hurts. We have not gotten over the girl that rejected us or the teacher that gave us an F. We're still jealous of the colleague who got promoted over us, disappointed that we did not receive a letter, angry that we were ignored. Yes, we have learned to live with it. It is pushed into the recesses of our hearts. But there is something about prayer that opens the soul and makes us conscious of the pain that is inside us. So suddenly we are faced with these hurts in our lives and to pray is to face those hurts. Face jealousy. To face our disappointments. Yes, we come to God with clenched fists when God invites us to come with open hands. We have treasures we do not want to part with, don't we? But we have to get a grip on what is ours and hold our own against those who would take it from us. And we make excuses. That's just how it is. And we say it as if we have given up on the belief that there is plenty for everyone. So here we stand with clenched fists trying to protect what time will ultimately take from us. 
So, my friends, to pray is to open our hands to God's promises. We are not alone. We live in God's world. God will not leave us, and God will not forsake us. When we pass through the waters, God will be with you. The rivers will not sweep over you. God is the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge God and God will direct your paths. We need to open our hands to our own weaknesses. A boy prayed, Dear God, please help me be a good boy, and if at first I don't succeed, help me try, try again. And a man prayed, Please make me the kind of person my dog thinks I am. I like that. Let us open our hands to be led. Prayer is not a magic way that we control God, but a humble means by which God can release God's power and purpose through us. Precious Lord, take my hand. Lead me on. Let me stand. I'm tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. So my friends, pray. Let Lakeside be a church that opens the door and really prays. A church that takes every request for prayer seriously. My friends, pray for one another. Pray for yourselves. Pray for your community, for our country and the world. Pray for your new pastor and your old one. Pray that God's kingdom may come on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Please stand and uh, join us in our hymn of response. Promise, Lord, take my hand. Oh, precious Lord. Precious Lord, take my hand. Lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. You may be seated, and we're going to have a litany. It will be on the screen for Mother's Day. We pray for moms whose children are grown. Pray for, 
We pray for moms experiencing changes they could not predict. We pray for pregnant women who will soon be moms. We pray for moms who face the demands of single parenthood. We pray for moms who enjoy financial abundance. We pray for moms who are raising their children in poverty. We pray for stepmoms. We pray for moms who are separated from their children. We pray for moms in marriages that are in crisis. We pray for moms who gave up their children for adoption. We pray for adoptive mothers. We pray for women who think about becoming mothers. We pray for women who desperately want or wanted to be mothers. We pray for women who have assumed the mother's role in a child's life. We pray for persons who are grieving the loss of their mother. Let us pray. Lord, on this day, we set aside to honor and remember mothers. We give you thanks for our mothers. We are grateful that you chose to give us life through them and that they received the gift of life from you and gave it to us. Thank you for the sacrifices they made in carrying us and giving us birth. We thank you for the women who raised us, who were our mothers in childhood. Whether birth mom, adopted mom, older sister, aunt, grandmother, stepmother, or someone else, we thank you for those women who held us and fed us, who cared for us and kissed away our pain. We pray that our lives may reflect the love they showed us and that they would be pleased to be called our moms. Thank you, Lord, for our mothers. Thank you for all you do for us today. Amen. Please stand for our closing hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
action items for this week. First of all, we will collect our offering at the back of this door. There's a basket there. Please be sure to share that. If you're watching online, you can uh, hit the Donate Now button, or you can always mail your check in. We appreciate the support that this congregation continues to give to this church. Open the door to prayer at Lakeside this week. Pray unceasingly. Pray for each other. Pray for your community. Pray for Jack as he begins his ministry here in July. And pray for the old guy until he gets gone anyway. <laughs> Remember, Prayer is our way to talk to God. It is important for us all. Let us stand in prayer as a congregation. This week, Wednesday, the bell choir will practice at 545, and we have our, huh? Not this week. Nobody let me know they weren't practicing this week. Okay, scratch that. We still are having our Zoom devotion on Wednesday evening at 7. So would love to, uh, to have you join us there. Uh, that email goes out. And next Sunday, we will have our Sunday school classes at 9.30 and our worship at 10.45. Look forward to seeing you next week. May you have a wonderful week. and May God bless you. Created by God... Blessed with love, chosen by our God, you are God's child. God loves you and I love you. Our joy comes from being God's hands. Amen.